Hey everybody, Curse is here with some more Stormfall Saga of Survival, but today, today we have patch notes for patch 1.14, which is also the PvP patch. So, let's go ahead and read those patch notes. So, anyways, I'm just going to read it, like I said, I'll read it verbatim, just like I do with all of the patch notes. So, I have them here on my left monitor, so I'm just going to read them. So what's up, Exiles? We've got some good news for you. The most expected update for a while will be live shortly. Check out the notes below to see what features were added and how they work. PvP. Ever wanted to raid another Exile Shelter? Well, now's your chance. Starting from update 1.14, PvP becomes available to all players. In order to activate it, you need to build a new workstation, the Locksmith's Table, uh, which is currently missing from the uh, uh, crafting screen. I, I tried looking for it earlier, but or maybe I'm just blind and I missed it. I don't know. But anyway, you build the locksmith's table and PvP becomes available. No, once it has been built, PvP will become available automatically. However, there are some players that you are unable to attack. Your clanmates, novices, players that have not built the locksmith's table yet, and protected players. For example, a player's shelter is automatically protected for a period of time after getting hit with a PvP attack. Note, this protection will be lost if the protected player initiates an attack against another exile shelter. In order to initiate an attack, you need to find the shelter on the world map and tap the attack button. It's better to take your horse along since if you have the horse, it allows you to steal two chests from the defender's shelter. Raiding a shelter without the horse will allow you to take a maximum of one chest. So in other words, uh, you will, they, they're going to add a uh, inventory slot for a chest uh, somewhere in here. Probably one of the, probably a tab, one of the tabs, I would, I would assume. So you will be able to steal one chest from your enemy's shelter, which is fine. Uh, Losing one chest is okay, but, uh, you know, there's... Just make sure you have stone walls, because like I said, right now there's not a lot of weapons that can break stone walls. I mean, there's a few, but there's not a lot of them. So, stone walls will help a lot right now. Unless, of course, they're going to be rebalancing weapons and... Because they never, they never list weapon balances, so... I don't know. Anyways... Uh, so, in order to initiate attack, important note, no. stolen chests will expire after a time and must be opened at the locksmith's table. Otherwise, all items they contain will be lost. Lost to both players? Or just lost to the player that stole the chest? I guess that's the question here. Anyway. So, I, I really don't know. It doesn't say. Uh, if your exile dies in the defender's shelter, the attack fails and you will not be able to return to the same shelter until the next attack becomes available. Your horse automatically returns to your own shelter when you are revived. Now, this statement makes me think you are only allowed to raid a certain amount of shelters per day. Uh, because it says when the next attack becomes available, so I'm not sure what that means. Anyways, if you leave the Defender's Shelter, you will be automatically forwarded to your own base. So, in other words, when you leave their shelter on the map, you're automatically going to go home. Which is fine. Usually people will want to go home after they leave the enemy shelter because they have a chest they need to drop off anyways, right? So, if you leave, okay. As a Defender, you will be able to protect your shelter with the help of so-called protection packs. Spawners. Uh, yeah, so this is actually something interesting. This is what I was kind of hoping would be included. Uh, you will be able to... I don't know if you purchase these out of the store or what. It's not very um, very uh, detailed. But anyways, as a defender, you'll be able to protect your shelter with the help of so-called protection pack spawners. There are six packs available. A goblin leader pack, which spawns goblin leaders. A spider pack... A wolf pack, undead pack, a bear pack, and a bone breaker pack. So apparently uh, you will be able to set down these spawners in your base that will spawn mobs to fight your enemy. 
which is just fine. I think that's uh, that's okay. Any of these packs can be purchased for tokens and placed in any free slot in your shelter, which I don't know what this means. So we're going to have to figure that part out. Anyway, each spawner generates a specific number of NPCs. After the last NPC has been spawned, the spawner will break. So I guess, you know, after, after it spawns the maximum number it's supposed to have spawned, uh, it will disappear from your shelter. What happens to the defender's shelter after the attack? First of all, it is important to understand that a shelter can only be attacked by one player at a time. So in other words, you can't be attacked by multiple players at a time, which makes sense because, like, how would two players come in to your shelter and steal the same chest, right? That that just wouldn't happen. There, there would be, like, server errors. The whole, the whole fucking thing would just explode. So, like, the whole server would just explode. So... Yeah, so one player at a time. So if a shelter is under attack by another player, you won't be able to attack that shelter until that player leaves. As soon as an attack initiated, is initiated by someone, that specific shelter is placed under protection and cannot be targeted by any other attacks for a certain time. The duration of this protection will depend on the damage done to the shelter. Any stolen items can be re any stolen items can be recovered. To do that, go to the recovery tab and use tokens to redeem the desired items. Note that you have seven days to do that. Otherwise, all items will expire. Oh, okay, so if you do lose your items, I don't know about these tokens they keep talking about, so I guess you get these tokens somehow. I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll figure that part out. Avoiding PvP. If you do not want to participate in PvP battles, you simply can disable it via the locksmith's table menu. Note that you can only do that if you have not initiated PV, yeah, PvP for seven days. So in other words, if you have not attacked another player for seven days, you can disable the PVP and not be attacked, which is fine. Or just as an alternative, you could just not build the locksmith's table. If you really, really don't ever, 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 ever want a PVP. So there you go. Tokens. From now on, you can destroy unwanted items and convert them into tokens by placing them into the circle of power. So the circle of power will now be another building we can build and it converts items into tokens. Okay, this is where we get those tokens. As a bonus, you will receive daily bonus quests that will allow you to earn more tokens by destroying specific items. Ooh, okay. Character customization. Per numerous requests, we've added more customization options. Five skin tones, eight male haircuts, eight female haircuts, five hair colors, and 10 tattoos. That's cool. Uh, so we will be able to, uh, I'm not entirely sure yet, here we go. Uh, so there will be uh, more customization options for your character, which will be cool. Anyways, uh, da -da 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 -da, back to this. Workstation upgrades. As of update 1.14, you will be able to instantly upgrade workstations for sapphires. Which, this kind of should have been a thing from the beginning. Uh, because, uh, really, like, some workstations have pretty unreasonable, uh, sometimes have unreasonable requirements to upgrade. And sometimes you just don't want to, or sometimes you just don't want to go out and collect the stuff. So, you'll be able to use sapphires to uh, upgrade workstations. Very cool. Uh, clan member limit upgrade. This is something I've been waiting for forever. Henceforth, any member of the clan, any member of the clan, can expand the maximum number of people in their clan by paying a set cost in sapphires. So we can use sapphires now to expand the clan roster, which is cool. Uh, right now we have four slots open, by the way. Uh, Dark Wolves, come join us if you are an active player. Level 40 or higher, please. Anyways. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So yeah, we can upgrade clan member limit, which is cool. Boosting craft time for ads. Any player can boost their crafting time by watching an ad now. So if you're crafting something that's going to take a whole long time, you can now watch an ad and... Uh, boost the boost the time which is cool my dog is barking free premium program 
Players who do not participate in the premium program will be able to activate it for one hour just by watching an ad. So if you want to have like the premium, uh, 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 the premium uh, advantages, uh, even just for an hour, you can watch an ad and you can get those, uh, get those for those things. And my dog is barking. And he's clan rewards. If a player leaves, and this is actually pretty a pretty good balance here. If a player leaves his or her clan before the end of a mission, so in other words, if you leave before the end of an event, his or her points will be deducted from the overall clan score and won't be returned even if that player rejoins the clan. So in other words, you can't you can't go clan hopping. The moment like just to get rewards which is a, a good thing so cl clan hoppers are a problem in all games and honestly it is a problem that needs to be addressed once it starts happening anyways bug fixes uh, there's only two of them fix the object is too far error hopefully <laughs> fix the issue causing error 500 to appear when a player tried to leave the clan Excellent, excellent, excellent. That is all of the uh, patch notes. So overall, this is a good patch for the game. Going to have PvP. People going to be able to start raiding each other, build better buildings, check stuff out. Um, I'll, I'll be able to start raiding buildings and maybe do a little, uh, a little bit of uh, what we would like to call... Uh, like uh, showing off people's bases on my channel, which will be really cool. So uh, hopefully, you know, if, I, if I find someone's base to be pretty cool and well defended, maybe I'll record me raiding it, and we will uh, see about you know we'll talk about it. So, anyways, that is all we have for the patch notes. Let me know what you guys think of it in the comments down below. If you are new to the channel, please make sure to hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell down there. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to join my Discord, become a paid member of the channel, yada, 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 like my Facebook page. All links are in the description. So I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.